Hello, welcome to Call to the News, the Watch It Played News Show. I'm Matthew Jude, or am I? Who's asking? Do they look angry? And first things first, a quick correction. As last episode, we reported all about Stonemaier Games' 20-day price guarantee. Now, I did get some of those details wrong, so to find out all about it, please see the pinned comment below for more details. Turns out I'm not inflammable. I mean infallible. Also, it turns out that Jamie Stegmaier does watch these sometimes, so it's another great excuse to talk about turning me into a promo card in my favourite game, Viticulture. So, you know. And another thing I said last episode, and this time I totally nailed it, I told you that we now know Funko is planning to bring us 40 games. And I said that I thought there would be family games with big IPs attached. I'm imagining a roster of family weight games with a host of intellectual properties attached to them. And now we know that one of those big IP games is gonna be The Goonies. I loved The Goonies, it's one of my childhood favourites, so The Goonies Never Say Die being designed by Prospero Hall, the design team behind Villainous, Funkoverse, Pan Am, Top Gun, Wonder Woman, talk about Fast and Furious, which they also designed. The Goonies Never Say Die is a one versus all asymmetrical game full of skill checks and minis and traps and treasure and puzzles and challenges as you try, as a group, to find hidden riches before the Goondocks Master, which definitely has the acronym GM, can undo your plans by sending the outlaw for a telly family or even one-eyed Willie himself after you. So look out for that coming soon. And also something that wasn't announced as far as I can see, but I found after some snooping around board game geek, the expansion Under the Goondocks is also going to be released in 2021, which will include three new adventures, new foes, and even more characters. So all that coming later this year. And now a quick message from the people who helped make this episode possible. Maximum Apocalypse Wasted Worlds is the anticipated continuation of the cooperative roguelike game series. It features the same compelling survival gameplay while adding two distinct campaigns that introduce new twists around exposure to the elements and interactions with other survivors. Survivors such as those from other games in the series, Maximum Apocalypse, Kaiju Rising, Gothic Horrors and Jurassic Perils are all fully playable in this version, which may just give players the edge they need to survive. The Wasted Wild Kickstarter launched on May 18th, so follow the link in this video's description to check it out, back it, and then check your back as you wade into the apocalyptic chaos that awaits you in the Wasted Wilds. <laughs> I come bearing more news than a polar bear with a secret message, which was an obscure pun that almost didn't make the cut. Starting with the Spiel des Jahres. It's that most wonderful time of the year where we all gather around our festive monitors and rekindle our love for board games by saying things like what on earth is that game in the running for board games biggest award are the adventures of robin hood micro macro crime city and zombie teens evolution and all three this year are cooperative games which is an interesting trend and i've played none of them though paula really wants to play robin hood because paula loves this fox the Adventures of Robin Hood is a storybook driven game as you live out ever evolving daring deeds. Micro Macro, which started its promotion last year as a series of cryptic social media posts and postcards, has you solve 16 cases that span an intricate massive map. Whereas Zombie Teens Evolution is the sequel to Zombie Kids Evolution, where you'll be working to collect ingredients to find the zombie antidote before time runs out. Of course, the Kenner Spiel or Heavier Games Award has Fantasy Realms, Lost Runes of Arnok, and Paleo in the running, and the Kinder Spiel has Dragomino, Mia London, and Storytellers going head to head. Though it is kind of interesting that Fantasy Realms is really a four year old game, but I suppose its new release in German makes it eligible for a nomination. But it does strike me as an odd choice as it's an older game, but it's fun just maybe kind of weird to see. Also it's interesting to see another game in the King Domino family in the running given that King Domino won the Spiel des Jahres in 2017. It's interesting, you know? It's not controversial, but it's interesting and I like talking about board games. Give me a break. 
We'll know the winners of the Kids Game Award mid-June and the main events, Kenner Spiel and Game of the Year will be announced mid-July. Who will win? Who knows? Do you know? Let us know what you're betting on in the comments below. <laughs> and on the back of all this Spiel de Jahres news, two of the games involved, Micro Macro and Lost Runes of Arnok, both announced new content this week. A sequel to Micro Macro Crime City called Full House is a new set of 16 cases for you to investigate as you pour over a new map full of crimes and this version marks each case with symbols so that parents can decide which cases are suitable for their children. It might have been nominated for Spiel de Jahres, but the original Micro Macro is very full of murder. They've also announced a standalone app and another sequel down the line aimed specifically at a younger audience. And the other news is that CGE has begun their launch of the solo campaign for The Lost Runes of Arnok with a free four chapter solo campaign named The Search for Professor Cuttle. To play you either need the new companion web based app or you can print and play the documents you need from the CGE website and in the campaign the famous Professor Cuttle's expedition has vanished somewhere in the uncharted waters of the Pacific Ocean while searching for a mysterious island nobody believed existed. Which it seems the professor may have found, but no one knows what happened to him or his expedition. You know, and it's news like this that's actually kind of difficult to report on because I'm so incredibly unbiased. You know, how do I report on something when really what I want to say is I'm powerfully excited about it because it's such a good game. But you gotta remain unbiased, right? What an incredible burden. I don't know how I do it. <laughs> Moving on to the world of digital games, I have two pieces of news destined to get the old noggin jogging. While the West Midlands may be just awful. It's terrible here. This isn't hyperbole. It's been raining for 30 days straight. Brass Birmingham Digital has been more formally announced following last year's tease about the possibility. It's allegedly most likely going to be making its way onto Steam and other platforms sometime in the very near future. And Dominion is getting an app. Now you might say to yourself, Dominion already has an app. There's two of them and a website you can play it on, but this is different and new. Temple Gates games are fitting the new app with a whole bunch of artificial intelligence which is of course deliciously ominous because it's smart enough to be able to play even win with cards that have yet to be designed. Essentially the AI doesn't learn how the cards work it instead learns how each element of each card works meaning that those elements when they're used on new cards you will already know how to use them against you as you play against it. The base game is set to be free across Steam, iOS and Android with the expansions available to buy and it will support cross-platform play which is a nice touch. <laughs> also in the world of digital and cardboard colliding Chip Theory Games the publishers of Cloudspire and Too Many Bones released this teaser with zero information other than details coming in 2022 but I'm guessing and you can call me crazy but looks like an Elder Scrolls board game is on the horizon. So I'm announcing here that they have announced now that we can expect an announcement next year. <laughs> hey do you want to get all spooky? Obviously the answer to that should always be yes and now hopefully we can get real spooky with the announcement of There Will Be Ghosts, a new game by Isaac Vega of Dead of Winter fame. There Will Be Ghosts will be coming from Vega's new studio Rose Gauntlet Entertainment which we've covered before with no mistakes and it's slated as actually being a scary board game which is a concept I couldn't be more excited about. I've not been actually scared in a game since a seven year old Matthew played the VHS based atmosphere games where the Crypt Keeper keeps on getting more decomposed every time you look at him. Messed me off that one. The new game is being specifically designed to be a horror game that will legitimately try to frighten its players and I tell you that has me very very excited. <laughs> And finally, we at Watch It Played, hello, welcome to Watch It, we've got some news of our own and that's our partnership we've begun with the annual British board game convention, Aircon. 
the next of which takes place on March next year in Harrogate, which is distinctly not the West Midlands. We'll be there, the whole darn team, to play games, hold events, and generally support the convention in any way we can. So it's an exciting venture, and we really think you'll enjoy the con. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you so much. And until next time, take care.